has the vision for Soulstorm changed? Because you were on the podcast three years ago, <coughs> it was pitched as like, you know, it's we're using elements from Exodus and pulling yeah. it into this and we're reworking the script and expanding on it because I think you said that game was made in what, like nine months or some crazy yeah, rush it was, job it was, originally? Yeah, it was just crazy. So it's, is it still that basic idea well, or has uh, it gotten further away from Exodus? Further away. Okay. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> well, so uh, a number of reasons. So um, one, when we started the project, we... We had a, li- a limited set of funds, and we were looking at, okay, how do we do this again? And, and New and Tasty, we decided to remake New and Tasty because it was that it, it embodied the image of the first part of the five-part epic that we called the Quintology. Yeah. It, it embodied it. But, every, but Exodus got off track right away, which is why we called it a bonus game. And the publisher was like, yeah, and that'll be the Quintology too. You'll live like nine months. And I was like, no, you, no, you just <laughs> the story, man. It's bleeding in the street. We're not calling that the Plinta. It's a bonus game, you know? And uh, it was really like that. It was like, they're like, but what do you mean? It's part two. And I'm like, not in nine months, motherfuckers. You know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And it was like really brutal. Sorry, you're going to yeah, be bleeping me. Yeah, out. you're okay. good. Okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, now you're getting a real deal, right? <laughs> Benny, what the Okay. Yeah. <laughs> James and, uh, me right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hemwire down. Uh, <laughs> the, the jets go. So, uh, so w- w- what 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 happened with that? We called it a bonus game because I took elements that were from the real story of the Quintology, and then I tried to kind of hack together a version of it that I could get a game out in nine months. Right. And that was the, you know, that was the easiest way, quite frankly. And this is, you do these things. You borrow millions of dollars from corporations. Mm-hmm. You, you better come through, you know, or else you're not going to do it again. You know, that's for sure. And so you try and work with your partners. You try and do different things. You make different choices. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. You live with the consequences. But... Um, uh, so are you trying to make Soulstorm basically something that would fit the mm-hmm. quintology at this point then? Well, so the idea was when we started, we go, look... Let's, let's make Soulstorm part two of the Quintology like it should have been. Right. Yeah. Which means Exodus has some things that you, you will be reminiscent in Soulstorm, but it is not Exodus. Yeah. It is not Exodus. It's and, a brand new game. And how has it shifted since then? Just fewer, so, fewer so, elements are being pulled from Well, Exodus? no, it just got bigger, right? So, okay. so what happened bigger. was like some of the sales got better. So we, we fund ourselves now, and which really means the gamer funds us now but not ahead of time by buying our games. Yeah. And now with digital distribution and self-publishing, we get to retain 70% of every penny spent on those games. And for us, because we love making games, we don't just keep the money. We're, we're, we're fueling it in. And mm-hmm. we find that we can make smarter decisions if we work on our own. That's, that's really the essence of it. Mm-hmm. And if we pay for it ourselves, which makes your stress level like 90 times more. But in doing that... We, we were looking at the project, and at first we thought it was, it was <laughs> we, at first we thought we'd change the story and we'd share some assets and stuff like this. But then it was like, brew is at the heart of this story. Brew. And it, it was, you know, it, brew was in the other story, but not the way it was meant to be, right? So it was, it, this is what I wanted to tell the people who enjoyed like, like Ex- Exodus and loved it. I'm, gr- I'm thrilled, thrilled that you loved it. This is not Exodus. Don't compare it. Don't think it's going to be. This is a brand new game. And it has a lot that's going on that, that Exodus did not. And so we're looking at this, and one of the first things we, just, we Benny and I, are like, well, what's, what's going to make this game different? And we're going to evolve on the tool set that we created for New and Tasty, which is running on Unity in a 2.5D. Where do we want to push this? And we said, well, it's got to start with the brew, because the original concept yep. was that the brew aside from the diabolical purpose, secret mystery of the brew, the brew was highly flammable. See, that was the thing. That was a thing, okay. right? And as a highly flammable consumer product, you should be able to do shit with that, like burn shit down, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, like, like spread, burn everything. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. burn it down, man. So just and, adding more gameplay systems like that. that yeah, originally so, kind of hinted so at. now, but this time we're going... If we had a team of 80 people, we don't have a lot of time to explore. Yeah. Right? So, so what we wanted to do is, I don't know if you ever saw Mark Cerny's, it was the second talk at DICE, and uh, uh, Mark Cerny did this talk, who I think is a genius, you know, but 
he, he gave this talk, it's called, called Game Design Documents Should Never Be More Than Five Pages, right? <laughs> and I thought he was always right. Like, okay. like, you get the things working, then you get them working better, then you build off of that. You know, you might have an idea where your story's going, but really, you got to find sweet spots. And, and you're not going to articulate it as a big plan. Big plans turn typically turn into big turds, right? And uh, unless you know that, well, this is Call of Duty 9, and then this time we're just going to add a dog, and then it's going to be able to parachute, and we're going to add these new features, and we know these extra social features, and you'll be able to share it to Facebook too, right? Like, whatever. <laughs> like, you know exactly where that game's going. Like, yeah. if you f*** up the next version of, of, of Gran Turismo, you're an idiot, man. <laughs> like, how can you have that much momentum? Now, they haven't yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you really have to be a f- Right, because <laughs> because it's there. You just need a you know prettier yeah. and it's more there. cars, yeah, new yeah. cars, yeah. 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 yeah, a few new tracks, yeah. like you yeah. know some new highlights, whatever, <laughs> sparkly paint jobs. I don't know, but the game is there. You'd really have to be an idiot to screw it up. It happens, but for us, we were looking at it and we go, we need to start with brew, and so <laughs> and so we're this we're now in the experimental stage, right? This guy's just crazy all the time because in the, ex- <laughs> in so the sorry, experimental Benny. stage, so no, it's it's okay. In the, uh, you know, so coming from a more technical background, when I hear some of his ideas as grand as they are, I just I have no idea in the moment how we're going to pull it off, right? But I just go with it with a little faith that we'll figure it out together. So right? the conclusion is there's just a lot more starting things on fire in Soulstorm than there was originally? <laughs> that's, that's not the conclusion. That's, okay. just, that's just a that's base reality. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> that's okay. A fact. Yeah. okay, got it. <laughs> but it go, the development of it goes like this, right? I'm, I'm like, he's like, it's not going to work. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, look, I had an idea of how to make this work technically back on PSX. Yeah. Um, thank God I didn't try to do it because it just would have just taxed oh, the system in, in, into like emergency brake mode and <laughs> overheat <laughs> chips. But uh, so, so, so we started playing <laughs> and we're at Freeman and we're playing and, uh, and we're looking at how liquid, flammable liquid works, right? Like I can spray a whole room but then I can drop a match over here and watch it. <laughs> You know, poof, watch that blue frame flame cover and watch and watch where there's more brew on the floor, there should be higher flames. And where there's less, it should be burning out and going away. So yeah. like behaving like fire. Not like what we see mostly in games where we see fire visual effects that are canned and not organic and not alive. But I wanted like live good fire. systemic fire. Okay. Good, real good fire, right? Yeah. So we start getting that to work, right? And we're like, bam, throwing brew all over, smash, smash, smash. Abe's throwing brew, and then just like throwing a spark. Ah, oh, it's awesome, you know? And we're like, awesome. And then we're like, well, what good's a game where you got a lot of fire and you can't burn shit down, right? So then. Let's throw in like two metric tons of physics on top of it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's a very physics y game now. Yeah, yeah. And this yeah. is. Why it's been a long time in development is just adding more and more it, physics? It, it's one of the reasons. One of yeah. the 